Hello, hello, and welcome to Simulacra Studios presents Trinity Continuum Aeon Varg for Salvation. Uh, I am your humble story guide, Scott. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm going to start the ball rolling with the introductions, heading, starting with Jim. Please introduce yourself and pass it to the next person. Uh, I am Jim. I will be playing Staff Sergeant Logan McCall, and uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and pass it to Josh because I don't have much to say today. Hi there. I'm Josh Heath. I use he, him pronouns, and I am playing looks upward toward the stars and sees danger ear laughs at and destroys, regularly known as laughs, who is they, them pronouns. And Jonathan, we are going to kick it over to you. I know how to unmute myself, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Hi, everybody. I'm Jonathan. Um, I will be playing Rafael Alvarez Castillo, the talent that is about to definitely be a fish out of water. My pronouns are he, him, and that is all that I believe I have to say. I'm going to kick it over to Nigel. Hello, everyone. My name is Nigel O'Rear. Uh, tonight, I, I will be playing Flight Lieutenant J, uh, Jude Fletcher. Uh, my pronouns, both in and out of character, are he, him. Um, yeah, not much to say. We are recording this on Super Bowl Sunday, uh, which is uh, a, during an apparent UFO invasion. So um, I, I said this earlier on my Twitter, uh, and, and I'll say it now, just in case anything happens while you happen to be watching this episode. Um, if you have decent camera equipment you owe it to the rest of the internet to get good photos of these things just putting that out into the universe trying to manifest uh we live in the age of cell phones and telephoto lenses we need good ufo imagery that's it off my high uh, off my soapbox oh um duh, duh, duh. who's left i believe that's sean sean uh hi i'm Sean Kreef, he, him. I play Cesar Wu, uh, also he, him. And actually, it, it's Wu Cesar. I put it backwards this time because um, everyone calls him Wu. But yes, he is a he, him. And I already said that. And let's get this on. Absolutely. But I have to wonder, who are the aliens rooting for in the Super Bowl? Anyway, when last we left our heroic Varg pilots... Uh, they had dispatched a the the aberrant uh, escorting a massive cargo vessel, which they found out was carrying uh, infants, about three thousand infants in stasis chambers, uh, and then they received a psionic invitation from a person in a you know space capable exosuit. Uh, to be formally invited to the planet Nest and parlay with its master, the uh, Nova named Sc the Scarlet. Uh, they accepted the invitation, made their way to the planet, came down by a space elevator, saw the uh, astoundingly large and impressively built military-style academy, uh, upon which seeing the thousands of seeming young students, uh, along with aberrants, novas, things that feel a little weird to our psychic uh, friends, uh, as well as some psychically active people uh, who all seem to be wearing a similar military-style outfit. And then finally, they were greeted by a creature that emerged from a murmuration of strange-looking birds uh, into an extremely tall, statuesque, bird-featured -fe woman uh, who formally invited him, uh, invited you all uh, to the Academy and her planet of Nest. And we will come right back in that scene where she continues to speak and says, let us, let us make an initial agreement between us. I will agree in your time here to be a good host, to provide you comforts and protection, if in return you all agree to be good guests, offering neither violence nor taking anything tangible or intangible that is not offered to you. And if we cannot achieve a further agreement, as long as both of these conditions are met, I promise you safe passage and 
my silence uh, as you go about your business elsewhere in the system. Is this agreeable to the lot of you? I look to everyone. I don't think we're going to get a better deal than that, given our current that, situations. I, I can't say that it's a bad deal. Yeah. I'm confused by the use of intangible. There may be some things that we don't intentionally notice or acquire intangibly can can we either define or allow that to be slightly amorphous she turns her attention to you and is about to speak and then kind of like you get the intention that she did this this is like she passed over but then she kind of really getting a good look at you and, and she squints a little bit and she says Par pardon me are you Perhaps a, a biokinetic? I am not. I am... They call me, looks upward toward the stars and sees danger, ear laughs at and destroys. I am a friend from afar of humanities in all its facets. Ah, well then, may I addend then, uh, make an addendum that... Uh, your actions here will reflect upon Earth and humanity and not uh, your home planet. That is appreciated. And my request to our agreement would be to not go digging to where my people may or may not be in the universe. It is, in my opinion, not tangible at this moment. We are in a state of active conflict. And uh, who needs to go getting more of that? Regardless, to your query regarding intangibility, that was my polite way of saying, don't go behind any locked doors, don't go looking for secrets that are not offered to you. If you see something and you think it might upset us, bring it up and we'll discuss it. Openness is a virtue that brought my people together. You will find we are very open here, but we still have our secrets. As you hold the secret of your home world and your home people dearly, so do, do we have things that we wish to protect here. Laughs will wrap two arms around uh, Logan and Jude. And I'm good. We agree to your terms, Mrs. I am the Scarlet. Scarlet. The Scarlet. You may refer to me as Scarlet if it is easier for you. Grammatically, yes. Hmm. I am Flight Lieutenant Jude Fletcher. Um, uh, my compatriots, I will allow them to introduce themselves. But uh, we thank you very much for the hospitality and the opportunity that you are presenting us here. You are most welcome. Uh Yes, introductions all around. I would much appreciate it. She looks over to uh, Cesar. Cesar. Wu Cesar. Um, that's all. And then she looks over to Logan. Staff Sergeant Logan McCall. Ma'am. I see. And uh, she kind of, her, her eyes just sort of look down and up. You? Uh, Delta already. operative Rafael Castillo. I see. Well, now that uh, introductions and initial terms are agreed upon, uh, I have no desire to make any of you walk up these many, many steps. And she waves her hand uh, and uh, like a... a a burst of, of feathers sort of appears behind her in a swirling circular pattern and you see another place behind her. This way. Did she just um, open a portal? She Yes, she did just open a portal. To, oh, I hate this. <laughs> can I tell where it was opened to? Um, It looked, well, just visually, it looks like a kind of very well-appointed city room. Um, if you'd like to roll, I, I guess like a uh, uh, spatial sense might be able to tell you that. 
Yeah, I think technically I would have sensed it coming, but spatial sense is weird that way. And yeah, was, and there's a lot of there's a lot of quantum going around here, so quantum. There's a lot of shenanigans occurring that may or may not be interrupting your normal uh, quantum shenanigans. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Those are the best kind. Well, this was an unnecessarily good roll. <laughs> um, seven successes. Holy crap! Damn. Uh, yeah, it is definitely like you. You sort of like cut through all of the 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 the, the corruption quantum buzz, uh, and you are able to tell. Yeah, it's on this planet, maybe about a mile, and it the space corresponds to somewhere in that the, the huge central building. Can I teleport there myself? Um, if you so desire, yeah, absolutely. Spend the sigh and make the roll. Okay, I am. Uh, six. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can make that. You can make it through. It's perfectly do doable. So you just, everyone just sort of sees him appear in the room without having walked into the portal, and <clears throat> and oh, she just kind of to a great start. <laughs> she just kind of smirks a little bit and says, "Ah, uh, well, it's apparent. Apparently, walking is above certain people, but sort of indicates." Logan will just walk through it. There, Raphael's uh, gonna walk through it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll walk through. It. I, I have no intention of making the big woman angry. Uh, I mean, if anyone wants to make an empathy roll to see if this has actually bothered her, yes, I would love to do that. Empathy, what's that? It's it's something us tech geeks don't have. Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, only one success, so. Okay. Just from context clues, this woman deals with petulant children all the time. <laughs> uh, but so everyone else walks through the portal. Um, uh as you do, uh, you it, it it is a sort of a seamless transition. Um, uh, it seems to be a much more direct method than uh, being teleported via other means, in which you have to be subsumed into the site into the sub quantum uh, universe and then popped out somewhere else. This seems to literally like cut through the middleman uh, and touch two places of space together. Um. Uh, and sort of as she walks behind you, uh, closing the portal, uh, Jude, you hear something. It's like it's like a radio station that's been on your entire life, but you've just now realized that it's there and that it's on. Um, it does not feel psychic or telepathic in any way. It feels very tangible. Uh, and it, it, it is in her voice, and it says, I had heard rumors. Fascinating. And uh, as she enters, uh, there are a couple of, of uh, young young adults who uh, attend, uh, uh, offer to take any any uh, any clothing or or anything that you know would, would impede your comfort as you are led to some very nice well upholstered very mm, 20th century uh looking uh home furniture uh in which everyone can have a comforting comforting seat uh and uh drinks there's a, a nice a very well appointed charcuterie board available how 20th century because i'm immediately picturing like 70s kitsch and I'm sure that's not it. Uh, I, I meant 21st century. Oh. But, there. yes, 21st century kitsch. So uh, she doesn't have a uh, like a, a sofa-laden discussion pit with lots of pillows. No, I no, was no. really, really Thank hoping for a conversation pit. But... Yeah, no, no, no. no. I, that, it, I'm not opposed to it, but this is it's, this is, this style is very much 21st century. I don't want a conversation pit now. <laughs> I know. Some, some things were lost to us, and, and it's just 
sad. This but is anyway. what they took from you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, does anyone accept any drinks or food or anything along those lines? What's is the food recognizable as from Earth, or is it completely native appearing food? Uh, it appears to be fairly familiar. It looks like you know roast beef and and uh, uh, things recognizable as cheese. <laughs> Logan's not going to be rude. If they're offering things to him, he will take them and eat them yeah. or drink them accordingly. Yeah. As long as they same. don't smell of alcohol. He, this is one of the few times he would not accept an alcohol drink. Um, there is a bar uh, with a, a bartender uh, sort of in the back of the room. And he sort of speaks up and he says, if anyone would like anything stronger to uh, settle your nerves, I am here at your service. And like he indicates the, the the walls behind him. And there are old looking, definitely like earth brands um, on the shelf, in addition to some other uh, like unlabeled stuff. But like <laughs> you see, you see a bottle of Johnny Walker Black back there. Right next to some sorry and brandy. <laughs> yeah. Be careful with that. It'll make you go blind. Um. Jude will try to stealthily take some of the 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 offered alcohol, mm -hmm. uh, but he will not go to the to the bar. He's trying to keep up appearances. All right. So once everyone is settled, uh, she like I said before, she started at fifteen foot. Now she's about seven, um, and as she's sort of acclimating into this room and sitting in a chair, those of you paying attention realize that she doesn't. In she also. She shrinks down to about six, uh, six feet tall. Uh, once now you're, that you're in a more intimate setting, <laughs> and she says, ah, "Well, now that everyone is truly uh, experiencing our hospitality, I'm sure you have questions. I would hate burning curiosity to impede." the things that I might wish to bring up. Before we slake our own curiosity, I would like to know what your intentions are with respect to us and our assets here. What questions do you have for us? Well, I'm operating off some assumptions. I'm assuming this isn't a diplomatic mission that you're underta undertaking. You would be correct. And I see your presence as an opportunity. My association with the colony is reaching a point that it is no longer profitable. Oh, you're a capitalist? Uh, not not in the sense of currency in terms of mm, my agenda the well-being of my charges uh, and uh, my general situation it has been fruitful and convenient for a time but that time is quickly running out and if you are, if humanity is being so bold enough to send an actual team here, first of all, you found this system and identified it appropriately as the house of your enemy, then I do not see, I see it as advantageous to hasten things along, make sure that when the cards are all on the table and the game has been won, that you're on Earth, the winning side. Well, I'm on my own side and I've always been. Yeah, but, but she comes out on top. That's the goal. <laughs> Delightful. No, I wish to be in a position to negotiate favorably for what I want in the future. Does that answer your question? It does. 
anyone else. I, I, I noticed that you did, in fact, ask a question while, while saying that you weren't doing so. Interesting. Anyone else? You're from Earth? Originally, yes. Were you with the Daedalus League? No, no, no. I, believe it or not, when I was aligned with an Earth-based organization, I worked for Project Utopia. Which anyone associated with Aeon would immediately recognize as yeah. like a very small project, a very project in the in the Aeon umbrella, but historically was the project that worked with uh, Novas mm -hmm. uh, prior to the Aberrant War. That would make sense. Hmm. So you're trying to negotiate this whole situation so that we don't blow you up too. I don't think yes. there's, well, I'm sure that you could do a lot of damage. And I don't think, I'm not so much interested in negotiation right now, rather than when you're done here and you make your reports, the powers that be back on Earth know that I was helpful. Out of play, um, I want to get the letter of our mission. We are to establish a beachhead. You are to... No, you are not here to establish a beachhead. You have a device that yes. will push away a significant amount of corruption such that Earth-based clairsentience can gather intelligence, military intelligence on the colony and its stronghold. Gotcha. Your survival is not, like, your survival or or establishing a beachhead, you know, those are the sort of things of, like, like you know, they your orders may mention, like, any tactical advantage you can gain for the war to cut, the, the ongoing war, absolutely. Right. But your absolute orders to which all others pale are find in a find the most appropriate place to put that beacon and get it there and right. activate it and we can all collectively read enough between the lines to understand that this is for the purpose of eventual military action in the system Ab absolutely gotcha um okay <clears throat> so back in play scott how much would i know about eden uh, make a path roll. Upeo or Wawa Upeo. Upeo. It's the same yeah. roll. So, uh, this Mom, is kind seven of success. Roll. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to roll. I assume I'm going to go with intellect. Mm -hmm. to see if I was paying attention. <laughs> see if you were paying attention in class. You yeah. want to do a flashback? <laughs> Uh, no, but I would like to spend four momentum. <laughs> okay. Um, I, sure, that, I'm okay with it. That would leave yeah. you with two momentum left. for the well, rest. How many do we have? You have, have six. Oh, then I can't spend four. I thought we had seven for some reason. No, you've got five five players plus your, uh, your, your thing. I was just going to try and A- get the more guaranteed success and B, get the experience point. I mean, you could do, if you, if everyone's okay with three, then. I'm fine with three. Yeah. I'm fine with three. Seems excessive, but I'm for it. <laughs> well, you get that sweet, sweet XP. We live in the land of excess. One success. One success. Oh God. You, you've heard, you've heard the basics about it. Like you were never involved in that that part of the order, but given that it was the reason why for the Exodus, you have like the the Cliff Notes versions of it. Could I name drop Apollo? If you could try, but that's probably the one name you know. We've made peaceful overtures with other. Novas. Uh, were you a compatriot of Apollo's? 
we've spoken on occasion, part of my utility to the colony is I am on much better terms with the members of our race still in this part of the galaxy than he is. And if there is diplomacy to be done, I provide assistance in that. Why are you here? This, and I kind of gesture out, if there are any windows, I gesture out of uh, them. This place is, for lack of a better term, uh, a paradise made in hell. Why not find somewhere better suited to build what you want and not be forgive me if this seems rude or impertinent near such a corrosive force well because it is the ideal place to do what I wished uh, Vega the sun itself provides a source of quantum energy uh, abundant uh, and let me let me speak of it in a bit more poetic terms. I hope that you have noticed that the orbits of our planet in this system are too perfect. Yeah. Yes. That is because this planet is not native to this system. Did you portal it in? With the assistance of some friends, um, I brought my planet here while the Dadius League was still in charge. In charge of what? The system. Shortly after the colony chose it for his base. Can we get a timeline? Um, a few decades ago. Regardless, so, this place had natural. This planet had natural features very conducive to my work, but I also required a counterbalance of quantum energy to provide the right mix for what I'm trying to do here. Let's just get the question done out the gates, then. What are you trying to do here? Evolve humanity. Give as many humans that I can the chance to take the next step upwards, whatever their particular genetic mix is most inclined towards. There are not just Novas amongst your people. No. I do not know if it is a thing that has been kept from you, or rather so rare that it might not be to come to the attention. But I understand that you have gained access to scion to psychic powers through technological means of those of you who wield it um and she kind of she kind of like gives a nod over to to uh laughs you know as in, as acknowledgement of whatever's going on with you but in very rare cases with an with an appropriate genetic mix and circumstances humans can naturally come to channel psychic energy. Is this unique to the environment of Vega and its surrounding environment? Is that why you're here? I don't believe it is. In my day, there was a Project Pandora operating on Earth who dealt with naturally occurring psi users. Um, I actually was one of the few Novas who worked, who knew of it and worked with it, given my proclivities and capabilities. I see. 
Well then. So. Huh. That's why you have scions. The term is sciad. At least it was back when we were studying such things. Sciad. Okay. So you are playing God? Or are you just giving gifts out of your own kind heart? This is... I want to see how far humanity can go. Not just my own kind, but the rest as well. Go where, though? You got a destination in mind? Pushing it to the brink so that it's not anything resembling what it used to be, most likely, is probably going to be the cutoff. No offense intended, that's the goal. Mm. You don't want us to be as simple as we, we are, correct? Is... Yes, I want... Um... I want as few unfortunate genetic backwaters as possible. Where they go from there, well, I love to see my birds fly. But I find it... I find that Mother Evolution acts too slow. And you're not concerned that the colony might interpret even this light a touch of diplomacy in a poor light? Oh, he most certainly would. You're not concerned about his ability to retaliate? I have a great deal of strength at my disposal. But I think far ahead. As I said, there are many reasons why I find my relationship with the colony coming to its end very soon. Why? Well, I've never enjoyed his company, nor I have, nor do I share his agenda. I, I would like to see if she's telling the truth. Yeah. <laughs> Roll it out. One person in the mix with empathy right now. <laughs> um, oh, God, I don't have any empathy. Fuck. Um, <laughs> it'll just have to be uh, composure. <laughs> um. I'm going to straight up say her leadership skill is, is higher than than a role would warrant. Well, I got an exploding tin. I got one success. Yeah, no. And yeah, <laughs> it, 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 her leadership scale is high enough that unless yeah. you had a way of boosting it. Yeah. This is, I have not agreed, do not uh, agree with his agenda. It was, we were always going to part ways. His view of the future of the human race is in many ways diametrically opposed to my own. But I needed to be in this system. Indeed, part of what I hope to one day negotiate with uh, the powers of Earth is the recognition of my ownership of this system. Once the... Heat dies down? Yeah, well, once the uh, infection has been scraped away. Mm -hmm. Also, Two ways to say the same thing. Also, um, I am beginning to reach the limit of the information which I am willing or able to provide to him, which is part of our arrangement. He's... His ideology... His beliefs it leads him to believe that the two ultimate forms of life in this universe are the quantum powered and the cancer cell. And he seeks to merge those two as closely as possible. Jude will actually give a little bit of a shudder. <clears throat> is that like? Are you? Is that a metaphor? Or are you being no? Literal? 
I am being quite literal. So he wants to create some sort of abomination. Yes. Superpowered cancer. That is what he is. And he wishes to metastasize to every cell on every planet that he can get his hands on. I say he. I understand that it, that was his original gender, but regardless. Well, I uh I would like to make a proposition. Let's hear it. As I said, I'd very much like to be seen as someone worth talking to rather than uh, sending a, a, a leviathan full of uh, legionnaires my way. So I would like to know in as much detail as you think prudent the details of your mission so that I may assist it. I hope you understand that that sort of answer will require a bit of discussion amongst us without your presence. By all means. I was intending to give you some time. Unless anyone has any further questions about myself, my planet, the Academy, I'm sure... I have I'm sure one you mild must... curiosity. Yes? The one that met with us and negotiated the... My invitation. Our arrival here. Yes. They spoke of wanting to examine that some of our weapons. Is there a particular... Is there something you're trying to learn, or is it more out of a desire to better arm your people? Am I, just, am I using the right term when I say newetic biotechnology? Is that the term that uh, describes uh, your vehicles and, and many of your devices? Yes. Basically. We are very curious about it because, from what we understand, it resonates quite well with the Psy Active. And what mother does not want toys for her children? I have yeah, one set question. Yes. What do you do with the children yes what do i do with the children mm -hmm. well when they are taken from the natal matrixes uh, on vega prime uh, and brought here i feed them clothe them educate them shelter them all of them yes all of them and prepare them for their chance at evolution. How many of them die in that chance? Many. But there is... Although I, although I regret each and every one, there are two facts that compel me to continue. The first, deadly struggle I have found is the best, most reliable way of awakening the potential of every sort within humanity. It's and not. To, go hmm? ahead. I said it's not, but... I've been doing this for decades. We'll agree to disagree. And second, as to the terms of my treaty with the colony, uh, those that do not pass muster and survive must be returned to Vega Prime. And I tell each and every one of my charges this. So they believe a fight to the death, a better end to what will happen to them there. If the pilot of the transport is any indication, that's an understandable decision. Yes. The colony, as I said, believes he if he could erupt, uh, he would erupt many that he could. 
uh, but he will find use for every human cell uh, that he can. And I find that as disgusting and disturbing as no doubt all of you do. Well, uh, with your leave, we would like a few minutes alone. By all means. Uh, she uh, indicates a kind of a, a, a terminal on the table. If you have any needs, uh, simply access the terminal and you will be provided for. Uh, and she uh, stands, uh, sort of looks over the room one one last time and says, I bid you adieu. I wish I hope to speak with you soon. She walks out of the room. Uh, and the, all of the other attendants do also leave with her so that you are entirely private. I am almost certain that there are still plenty of means for them to eavesdrop on us. So. Yeah, this, is, this isn't this is actually going to be a private conversation, so we just need to deal with that right here and now. So... Can I, can I make a reference? Uh, please. It, you're going to do it anyway. It. Just do it. This reminds me of World War II, and I feel like we're right between Mengele and Stalin right now. Oh yeah, this is this is some straight up eugenics bullshit. And as mm. yeah, yeah, I will I will say that all we have to do is what we have already been ordered to do and there are far greater minds with far greater ethical training than any of us who can make the necessary decisions that are to come after our mission is complete here i'm i'm doing my best to compartmentalize all of this i mean and as the genetic backwater in the room i have no fucking issues with the idea of stringing her along uh, i'm i am not in any way suggesting that we form some sort of undying alliance this Good. is this is a matter of convenience tactical superiority and intelligence gathering yeah okay so are we comfortable sharing any degree of mission details with her broad strokes i would suggest leaving out our plan b I would like to keep that as an ace in the hole as well. Uh, can I just make a suggestion, please? Yeah. This this is this is group time. Look at me. I'm I'm being group inclusive. Let's uh, let's That's link up our thing, link up our mini comps and just communicate that way. One second. I guess I'm going to do that think, for everybody. No, I'm sure we can just. Yeah. Yeah, you guys have ad hoc. Can, network can I help you do that somehow? I just figure at least we, they can't eavesdrop on us typing, or maybe they can't. I don't know. I'm assuming they cannot. I mean, I'm I sure. Probably... I'm sure a Nova with enough super perception will be able to figure out from the clicking of our fingers on our on our things, like what what words we're typing. Uh, if anyone would like to make a technology roll to set up a secure ad hoc, uh, here makeup, I go. <laughs> uh, that has uh, that has a better degree of privacy than uh, than the simple functions of your of your agents. Go ahead and do that for me. Okay, one moment. Rafa, and, uh, yeah. L Logan, Rafa, if you'd yeah. like to, if you'd like to uh, assist, absolutely with that. assist me, please. Yeah, I was gonna say if if I can assist in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, totally. Uh, Just go ahead and give me a, another technology roll, and we'll factor that into Raphael's roll. That is five successes. Nice. He's not bad with the technology. He's just not... That's not his main facet. <laughs> uh, that is... I, I am, like, really built to do just a handful of things, guys, and this is one of them that is eight. Eight? All right. So. This is going to be the most secure ad hoc network ever. <laughs> so with, a, with about 10 minutes of work, you have, you like, unless they literally like come in with either some like active Nova power or an electrokinetic intrusion, you have the most secure network you can, you can establish with your, the tools at your disposal. 
And once that is ready. Mm -hmm. So typing. And, yeah, we will assume <laughs> this is all typing from yeah. this point on. Yeah, just Raphael would have given people the, you know, the, them the thumbs up as soon as it's ready. I mean, we're here to place a, a an anti-corruption beacon for intelligence gathering purposes. Yeah. Done and done. That is a simple thing for us to convey and she can draw whatever conclusion she wants from that. Hell, she might even be willing to actively assist. I think and, it might uh, be worth it to note that we need to find the best place to put it. We can't just throw it at it and run away. <clears throat> we will most likely need to infiltrate and be on the colony for a period of time. Yeah. And, and again, uh, I'm really not in the in the in the normal practice of sharing much in the way of tactical information with an enemy of humanity as lovely a conversationalist as she might be. No, oh, she's um, absolutely clearly an enemy. But uh, it, in all honesty, I wanted to see what was on this planet, and I did propose the possibility of having some sort of alliance here. So uh, yeah. it would be hypocritical of me to not at least examine our options in that in that light. So, um, yeah. Laughs uh, just uh, sends a gif of a nuclear explosion. That would That's indeed be plan card. B. I mean, we have that. And it may not ever be used, but we have it. And I would rather keep that a secret. That's the kind of thing that I would really feel only comfortable making that public knowledge kind of all, you know, once. Just feels dramatically appropriate. I don't feel that we know enough to label her directly as an enemy yet. A monster. Is, let me. She's a eugenicist. Sorry, that's almost as bad as a capitalist. So, no. You can be awful and not try and kill us. Laughs. That is, in fact, actually worse than a capitalist. But moving away from that, um, really, also, I she is absolutely yeah. an enemy but this is sort of a, a situation i really feel dirty saying this the enemy of my enemy is my temporarily temporary and hopefully expendable ally also laughs you know that there's like six to seven billion capitalists on earth and every one of them's a problem <laughs> we're just learning all sorts of things about one another today um so um Matters of philosophy aside, um, is the group in agreement of sharing that basic mission parameter with uh, the Scarlet? I think we should obfuscate it a little bit more. We should still the waters, as my people say. We should lie to her and add some element that obscures some of what our long-term plans are. How would you propose we do that? There are a couple of different ways, but I would overemphasize the impact of our action. Perhaps indicate that it will cause a disruption in quantum that could weaken the colony for a period of time. What end? This, <clears throat> she should be afraid deception. of us as well as willing to work with us in this situation. I don't think that's going to happen. She has a superhuman army. And if she has psi actives, there's a good chance there's at least one telepath. Then Actually, let me lie. Because I don't think they will be able to get through to my brains. You do have multiples, don't you? It's more of a dis distributed network of uh, neurons throughout my entire body, but yeah. I'm willing to be the one that backs up that lie. i am generally been fairly good at keeping people out of my head. If we want to, if we want to threaten her, then we can reveal the tactical nuclear device we have. That, no. immediately, that immediately puts us, us actively as hostiles. And yeah. what if that is actually no threat to her? Right. It may very well be <laughs> one Nova old enough as she, old as she is who can 
move planets, a nuke may not be much, but... It will, however, destroy enough of her assets that would be a problem. And if we can assume, and this is going on a lot right now, but if we can assume her posture towards her people is as genuine and maternal as she makes it appear to be, she doesn't want she's to be not the target. Exactly. It, we're not... While I think we want her to be afraid of us, I don't think we are threatening her. We are hinting at a greater capacity of our alliance than what she believes we are capable of. So you would have her work in our best interest out of the semi-falsehood that an advantageous position for the beacon not only permits intelligence gathering, but would also compromise the colony in Correct. some way. Yes. I see what you mean. We also don't know why she hasn't simply taken care of the issue herself. I can actually postulate pretty I have easily a couple as of to what it guesses is. guesses as well. Mm. We I'm very curious. curious. But she's, as she said, her agreement is not yet run its course so maybe if we just waited a few weeks this whole situation would resolve itself I don't think that's going to happen but I uh, don't know the timeline of this would anyone like to roll enigmas sure puzzle solver <laughs> yep built to do a handful of things mm -hmm. but do them well please do it I love yep. the taste of crayons <laughs> we have found the marine of the group <laughs> really I, i'm more air force but i only know insults against marines the only the right. only one i know air force is chair force and that's hardly imaginative you do remember four for me really quick you do four. fight in a chair <laughs> i do fight in a chair it is five successes five. because i got two tens oh nice we all fight in chairs. Right, so how, how many total did you roll? I have five successes. Okay. Excellent. Okay, so you you put some things together um, as you're like, you know, timeline, you know, why, like the question of why she hasn't taken care of the issue herself. Um, the obvious answer is that she can't. With all the power that she has here, you are willing to bet that the colony has more. Just straight numerical and power superiority, despite that she has, you know, a bunch of Novas and Psy, psy Actives and a bunch of child soldiers who you, based off the way that you're, you're, you're reading her, she probably does not consider the, the, the actual norm humans on the planet to be military assets. So she's, she is, you, you think. Uh, that from a tactical standpoint, your presence here is her best option to start to get out of this deal. And that'll be related with the finisher of she is seeing us as the only exit strategy. Well, that's our selling point. I also have a theory <clears throat> that the colony is distributed neural network similar to your friend here and if so eliminating such a being is incredibly difficult when a cutting continues to exist far away from the rest of the being it can survive well our mission is not the elimination of the colony so but she I doesn't will... need to know that no but I will uh, again. I will let the I will let the the people with far more stars on their lapels than me make that decision of just how many nukes to shove through whatever amazing transit hall we managed to open up. I I think she's probably aware that we are not here to yeah. destroy the colony. This is far too small of a force. Oh, she might think we're idiots. 
she this thinks is also true. Is. But if she thought us really idiots, would she have bothered making contact or would she have just wiped us off the face of the map? When, again, this is her only opportunity that she's able to bank on, she's going to bring us to the table no matter what. She might just think humanity grew some really big uh, coconuts. Cajones? Ah, cojones. That's the word. Cajones, yeah. um, and are doing something stupid like history. No. She's lived through at least one of them. And, and honestly, Raphael, uh, you know, I can only begin to imagine what it's going to be like to have something like that look down on you, but uh, uh, I, I'm I'm not going to to stop her from underestimating you. You you're you're the best one in the bunch, as far as I'm concerned. You are far too kind, but I'm absolutely used to people completely underestimating me, and that is perfectly fine with me. It's also um, a really good thing in a fight. Just saying. Um, and I'm... that is actually done. You know, physically out loud. <laughs> McCall, what are your thoughts? I don't think we reveal the big surprise. I don't think we tell them about the nuke. Do I think eugenicists are awful? Yes. But I feel like their assets are more than we can afford to pass up. Good points both. Well, laughs, she seems to like you. Are you okay with being our spokesfish? I don't like uh, fish. Hmm. Starfish has too many squid. Spoke squid. (laughs) See, while I'm neither a starfish or a squid, I actually kind of like the sound of that better. Um, Yes. You're not even a cephalopod. (laughs) Just just, roll with it. It rolls off the tongues easier, doesn't it? Well, okay, spokes being, but then that's really plain. Come on, being. Uh, Right. I think we're getting into the weeds here, guys. <laughs> but like for both, best. both <laughs> practical and uh, and manipulative reasons, she seems to. Uh, uh, I think exploiting her fascination with you in this arena is a good idea. So, yeah, I'm good with this. If y'all are, let's go with it. This is the best military asset we've come across since. Yeah the formation of the Psy Orders. Potentially. She not only is apparently quite a powerful Nova, but she has more intelligence than we could have hoped for on the colony. Also, sorry, who's Apollo? The Greek god of the sun? Cesar. Freaky awful. It's a really shit. bad lie. Um, that, for me, that's saying something. I'm uh, also that's wi- um that's classified, Lieutenant. Cesar, if this is going to oh, be God damn. if this is going to have the impact that it appeared to have, I'm afraid need to know now includes us. I mean the legion. Give us, give us broad strokes if you have to. Okay, so there's a whole planet of sane-ish Novas out there. I'm sure there are many, but... That we've met and have positive relations with. Earth has positive relations. Cordial, we'll say. The Upeo have good relations with them. Oh, wow. Now it all makes sense. I thought it was something, Mm. like, worse, but that's... Wow. Oh, boy. In front of everyone, I stand, walk to the bar, and take the bottle of Johnny Walker Black Label (laughs) off the shelf. (laughs) And I stand up and go, Sir, this is not the time to be drinking. 
I would argue the, the opposite, Staff Sergeant. Uh, we are in the middle of negotiations. Wait, Being did... impaired by alcohol is not the smart decision. Laughs, did you and Raphael not know this either? I, uh, I knew a thing or two in that just connected dots. Yeah. I am going to... Wh what can I do to resist the compulsion of, of an addiction here? Oh boy, an integrity Stop. roll. Integrity, integrity okay. Role, probably composure or resolve. Resolve probably be the most appropriate. And if laughs can help by putting a gentle tentacle on your <laughs> shoulder in empathy, that'll uh, give it. That'll give an enhancement. This is how gonna... much. How much momentum oh. do we have? We have three, three left. Three. May I spend two? Sure. To double my dice pool. <laughs> Um, that is one success with one enhancement. You are like, like, uh, like as you were talking, like that the hand was going to unstopper it, uh, and and you look, you were looking for a glass, but the 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 direness of your situation and and the 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 words of the staff sergeant and the comforting presence of the tentacle, <laughs> all all push you back from the edge and you're able to set the bottle down it it lands heavy um but it does it does drop we we, we can enjoy a drink later for now we need to remain clear-minded and level-headed you see and he is he is sweating and it is a it is a very comfortable room it i understand the struggle i really do Let's sit back down, finish our internal discussion. I also think, and Laf says this out loud, I also think we should um, get them some new booze. Maybe we can throw that into the relation, into the, <laughs> the, the, the deal. There are some Sorry, questions what? that... <laughs> that, that... This is out of Trade date. Trade relations, I guess. Do your people not have alcohol? Not. No. It, it just made sort of gets stronger. It's better with the with age. Yeah. Properly made. Depends on the alcohol, but yes. I really don't understand poisoning oneself, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, there are some questions that were unasked. Um, as far as their experiments go no one thought to ask are your statistics improving oh is the I, method, I, I is thought the to method ask it i just getting, didn't ask it because i didn't want to get that confrontational just yet it is something that would affect us morally knowing that their process is improving also, uh, did, she, did she dismiss me because she doesn't think scions count? Or does she not understand the chamber? Because that seems like a way more effective method than let's fight to the death and see if one of us gets superpowers. Well, you see, not fighting to the death doesn't play into her whole survival of the fittest, I'm going to play God thing. There's also maybe downsides to Prometheus chambers. Just, I don't know for a fact, I, but the theory. I have experience dealing with the downside of imbalance. That's part of the reason I was stripped of my power in prison. Well, I mean, we don't know anything about Syed's does she think you're like an abomination, Jude? Hmm. Out of play, does anyone actually, has anyone talked to Jude about superior process? 
I mean, you you know what it is in this group. Have I? But, I have I, not discussed it. I don't, I don't think in this. I think I think all of you think that think... both Raphael and Jude are normal people. Oh, I assumed we knew that he was. No, but again, I, I always think of the Japanese ones that have overt. Yeah, no, Jude does not have overt cybernetics. He looks like a dude. Yeah. Both he and Raphael just look normal. Yeah, and he hasn't lifted a car above his head or anything. So, um, would anyone like to make a retroactive empathy roll to to uh, objectively notice the difference in treatment between Jude and Raphael? I, I would like. Sure, to, sure I have a dot of empathy. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael's assumption, straight up, is that. Jude's going to get more respect because Jude identified himself as being a higher ranking individual. So, two. Actually, aren't you a higher ranking individual than Jude? There's different hierarchy structures. Yeah. We're, we're, we're I, don't, I, don't, I don't know different what organizations. the is of. Uh... It, it doesn't work like the American military, where a lieutenant in the Army and a lieutenant in the Navy are yeah. the same rank. It doesn't work like that. All right, so uh, who, who I got might... four on my empathy. Four? Role, so. Okay. All right. Yeah. So um laughs and Cesar did notice the difference. Like there was a a a definite a definite condescension toward Raphael and um uh, the, the attitude towards Jude was more of uh she considered him on par with the rest of you. Uh Logan uh was able to kind of parse through the the bird features uh and and notice like straight up bedroom eyes towards Jude. <laughs> she seems to like you, Lieutenant. I think you might have found an admirer. What? You didn't notice? No, I did not. Oh, I thought she just really disliked Castillo. When a, no. a, a male star squid and a female star squid <laughs> like each other. We do not laugh. Need... That's no. No. Um well they Wow. Congratulations. Cards on I the guess. table. Um are you are any of you familiar with uh the word Jinketsu? Japanese, is it? Yeah. It is. I'm, I'm, I'm half out sure. of character. I'm not. I don't know if I would be in character. I'm not sure if I would be in character. Um, what would be the best role for that? Um, humanities or science? Yeah, I would. I would go with humanities because that's like that. That would be the closest to like spy shit and spy craft and intelligence. So yeah, I mean, anyone would like to make a very difficult humanities role. Sure, or couldn't the, the Aeon people could make a path roll, couldn't they? Yeah, the Aeon yeah, people. I was actually yeah. going to say, yeah, the Aeon people a... could make a path roll. How, how does how do I how do I path roll? A path roll is your rating in the path, which for you would be the Aeon Trinity, plus okay. whatever attribute you want to to sell for it. Uh, Got it. I since those dice pools are always going to be probably smaller than most other dice pools, I tend to treat them exponentially in terms of how much you get out of them, at least for like information rolls. Okay. Or, or that kind of thing. So, it's worth a roll, and probably yeah. and much less difficult than a straight up humanities roll would be. Two yeah, successes is... for laughs on the okay. Aeon roll. Uh, yeah, and if anyone wants to do humanities, it would be a difficulty five roll. Six on the Aeon roll. Is Jay um, regular rolling work? amazingly? Yeah. So Raphael absolutely knows about what. Um, uh, Jude is talking about. I would say you probably already know what Jude is, um, which is uh, the Aeon Trinity has recently a clandestinely acquired technology from Nippon, which they've been having it for a while and no one else knows about it, that allows someone who is genetically predestined, uh, pre, um, predisposed to erupting as an aberrant or, or Nova and safely trigger them. In a in a controlled, non-corruptive fashion. Uh, and with that role, yeah, you you not only do you know this, you've known this all along. 
but the rest of you and uh, I yeah la um last you you nope uh and did, did either of you make a humanities roll? All right, so yeah, so that's that's what's known. Simply put, there was Raphael's a, just trying to play it really cool right now. <laughs> there is a means by which eruptive potential can be safely harnessed and triggered in such a way that the resulting person, while not in command of quantum energies like a Nova or an Aberrant, is still gifted with a certain set of above baseline abilities. That is what I am. The original phrase is Japanese because the technique was developed by a Japanese science team. Jinketsu translates roughly as superior person. I don't really like that label. How many... Anyone else have any earth-shattering revelations they want to share with the team? Uh, I apparently accidentally revealed that Eden exists, and uh, apparently Fletcher's uh, half aberrant. Next, you're going to say that Laughs is an alien. Oh, geez, you stole my thunder. Uh, <laughs> the only other thing I'll add is there are really dangerous things but out there I in the universe that'll no. kill all of us eventually. <laughs> Cards on the table. Already knew that coming into this. Part of the reason why I didn't bat an eye when Fletcher was put in command. Glad someone didn't. You got me out of prison. I could care less what you are. That's appreciated. It is also why I've referred to myself as the only genetic backwater at the table here. Uh, well, I thought so. I I just thought you had bad self esteem or no I don't know I'm not like any of you. Hmm. You and laughs have a lot in common. <laughs> hmm. Well, it seems as though we so, have. It, I I will say. Um, Coming through the portal to here, to this room, Scarlet did um, message me. Uh, it didn't seem to be anything. Uh, it wasn't like a radio transmission or anything that I could share with the class. Tell. I just uh, said that she'd always heard rumors, I'm assuming, about what I am. Oh boy. Uh, I don't know what I register to them as, but obviously it's distinct enough that <clears throat> it's noticeable. So you're saying she slid up into your DMs? Uh, I guess. I'm sorry, I'm trying to ease the tension a little bit. My jokes are apparently um, not well received. So oh, no. one starfish loves another starfish. Oh God! <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Your species Plus, reproduces that's... by budding. Not always. We actually reproduce in three distinct, okay. different ways. We don't need the. We, I don't need the biology please. lesson right now, please. We we were saying revelations. I was just going to drop it all on the table. I was just going to talk about my three pronged dick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, had to had to add that in there. So, I, I'm curious about her curiosity, uh, but I am in no way going to let that jeopardize anything that's going to happen here. Um, but, I don't know, I, I might want to ask some questions in a, in a personal line. Of, of a personal tangent outside of the mission uh, parameters that we're about to describe, but I figure that'll be for 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 another another time. Are we okay with signaling them to come back in? Almost. Um, yeah. I just I do want to say that I'm a little bit wary of how much she does know. I mean, I suppose she could have learned of Leviathans from the colony, but she clearly knows they exist. And 
So I'm going to remind that somehow they already knew that this whole mission was going to happen. Remember? We got to assume well, they have clairsentience. They... Hmm. I also think they probably discovered it when we first got into their little satellite and. No, I'm actually going back further than that. I'm going back to the fact that we were literally attacked right as we came together. Well, you don't think that was... I don't think it was Scarlet. a coincidence. But you don't think it was the Scarlet, do you? I don't think it was the Scarlet necessarily, but I do think that it's likely the result of elements that are in contact with Scar with the Scarlet or the Colony. And if one of them knows, if the colony, if one of them as, knows, the other stands a chance of knowing. As someone who's had to make <clears throat> shitty calls in the past, sometimes looking out for your people is better than not. They might be smaller in size than the colony and at constant risk of attack. Her trading information might be the only thing saving her and her people from being eradicated. Yeah. I would not put it against her, though it is something to be concerned about. I wonder how the people in France feel about that information trading. Not very good. Sorry for getting dark. Uh, Come on, this whole thing is, is dark. That's... Lieutenant, None of us is comfortable with this. Um, I'm just going to say, if it's going to help our mission, you should climb that mountain. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I hate every single one of you. <laughs> and, and with that, I'll I'll hit the button on the terminal and we'll call them in. All right. Um, so you call in. Uh, a couple of attendants come in uh, first and, and let you know that, that the Scarlet is on her way. Uh, they refresh any, any drinks. Uh, and take any requests for uh, for food or other other comforts. Um, Coffee, uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely will do. Um, and they, uh, a fresh prop pot is acquired. Um, really good, like beans that were strains of beans that were probably lost in the aberrant war. Um, uh, and eventually the scarlet does return um uh and uh, sits back down in the the very well appointed very plush pie back chair that she was sitting in earlier and she says how have your deliberations gone very well the scarlet we would like to tell you our mission parameters our goal was to find the most opportune location within this system to release a device that would clear a large portion of quantum and diminish its capacity in a significant way for an extended period of time so that we could use tools to do extensive reconnaissance on the rest of the system. You're, you're talking of clairsentience, yes? We're talking about ruffling the waters, creating a tsunami, a wave larger within the noetic totality than you have ever witnessed. Uh, uh, like, like, there's just the slightest glassing over of her eyes. When, when you start getting into, like, the technicalities of it, like, okay, whatever. Um, but... Uh, I, I will say that we are not privy to tactical information beyond the immediate uh, goals of our mission. What will be done with it, we can only guess at. I'm sure that you and I and the rest of this team could probably come up with a fair amount of what might very well happen with detailed tacti tactical information about this system but we are not aware of what exactly is going to happen i see a clever plan well then i can tell you what i know then you're looking for 
you said the right spot, the, the most advantageous spot. Well, I know. Uh, and she says, let, let us deal visually. And she goes over to the terminal um, and like enters in uh, some sort of uh, like personal access device. Uh, and a, a holographic display springs up from it. Uh, and you see a large area of land that you assume to be on the surface of Vega Prime um uh of just like miles upon miles of like arranged in a in a in a perfect grid like three story tall very utilitarian buildings every single one of them is in the same uh is is the same from the other one just from a, a top down view of it uh and then sort of in the center of that is a gigantic techno organic and not in the way of biotech um like it does not have like the harmonious living flow it is literally machines and organic material grafted together in various places that like the uh, pilot from the ship kind of yes um uh that uh you know as like you sort of like uh she like moves it around and and um it goes up as far as a space elevator would, but it is a like gigantic structure um, that might serve as a space elevator in addition to being just a good goddamn big citadel uh, spire. Uh, and she like zooms out a little bit uh, out into sort of where you can tell orbit um, and this like proto moon sized ball. Uh, seems to be hovering directly over that spire. Um, and she says, "Ball, yeah, uh, just a, a spherical shape." It's and not a says, ball of flesh, is it? Well, I wanted to spare any sensibilities, but I could increase the resolution. Um, and yes, it is just it is tumors. It is city sized tumors sort of uh like conglomerated with uh, with gigantic eyes and like tendrils moving in and out uh um hovering like i said proto moon size just like uh, right above this this spire that that reaches up into orbit that's Thanks, no moon so no it is not that is Thanks, his current physical incarnation you don't want to go there. Why? Other than instant death. In instant, instant death, you probably wouldn't learn what you wish to learn. Well, you may learn what you wish to learn, but I doubt that any, any device that you are describing could pierce his personal quantum field. Um, however, my sources indicate that there is a place on Vega Prime that is more defended, more secretive, and vitally important for reasons I know not which. I simply know that a place exists that cost my intelligence gathering capacity a great deal to identify and she pulls the image back down uh to the area of the spire rearranges the the projection so that it uh kind of goes isometric uh and then goes about five miles down from the surface he protects that more than he protects anything else i don't know what it is but if there's a secret, if there's something worth knowing, it is there. I'm going to try and meditate on that location just to try and get a sense of where I think it will be. It's probably going to come in handy. Uh, you go to meditate and think upon it. The corruption has scale over you. Like it has sufficient scale to make a role and inapplicable. 
just the ambient corruption of that entire spire. What if we work together, the three scions in the room? Um, I believe you have methods of increasing scale. You would have to use those from the Prometheus Unbound to try and... And, and I'm them. actually extra bad at that due to my upward focus. Mm. And... Or no, I'm well, I'm bad at the creative use. I'm not sure if that's entirely the same thing. Yeah, I think upward focus... Um... Yeah, you're good at pushing yourself. Yes, you're not, good, I'm not at, good at creatively yeah, applying yeah. the power. So your 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 abilities would actually apply to this. Um. So hear me out. If you want to explain it to me, I might have an idea for a suggestion for what you can do, Scott. Would I be able to actually spend inspiration to engage in some dramatic editing to help this be possible? Um, the meditation bit, I mean. I'm trying to think because you're not you. Your there's the thermal exhaust port, you see. Yeah, there's a thermal exhaust. Exactly. Port. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think because you, you're 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 dealing with with severe like avocado and peanut butter vibes oh, yeah. here in terms I know. of like compatibility. Um, what kind of dramatic editing would you like? Be be specific in the type of change you'd like to elicit in the in this story. Be, I, need, I need to hear some creativity here. Let I have an idea. Okay. okay. Uh, when aberrants use their abilities, they spend corruption, correct? Yes. So maybe the colony had had some solar flare it needed to defend itself from that had cost it enough corruption that maybe we could penetrate. That would be, a, yeah, I, I would say, a uh, yeah, affecting the colony directly in that way, if you spend three inspiration, then there would be, there would be a lessening of the ambient corruption enough to decrease the scale uh, down to the point where a a roll is possible, but there will be some some scale that you'll have to 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 deal with. Your camera uh, went all unfocused, by the way. Hmm? Oh. Your camera went all unfocused. Now it's good. <laughs> I'm willing to do that if um, Cesar's player is uh, wants to make that that roll. I'm not sure what i'm rolling yet but yeah, uh, i think you would definitely need to um link up link with, up um laughs mm -hmm. um which i don't think they've technically addressed whether psionic aliens and scions can do the link thing but you We've know what done it, i think yeah you've already yeah, done, we've it. Already done it. So, yeah. yeah yeah so go yeah you would definitely need to link up with um with laughs to, to pull this off all right. Also, I think there was some misunderstanding of what I was trying to. Do. I was just yeah. trying to understand where it was on the planet, like yeah. I, And I, I, I am, yeah, I am telling you that. Oh, it's your, just I can't even think about the planet. Like you can think about it, but like any, well, okay. We're, if you were just trying to think about it, then yeah, okay, that's one thing. But if you were trying to get a psychic sense of it, yes and no. The the bare minimal connection of like I saw this in a picture. Mm -hmm. Where is this? But yeah, uh, I, I, I will try and um, link up and see if we can take a little look-see. So, All right. So then, yeah, there's yeah. a, right. there's a okay. little complication for the colony then. Indeed. So, yeah, so if you want to use your basically uh, use, well, what's, what's Laugh's attunement range, by the way? Oh, that is a great question. I have... Uh... Three psi and extended attunement. So um, the Aeon uh, book will not open for me, so I can't check. I apologize. It should uh, be an astronomical unit. I believe so. Yeah, it's a significant distance, but. Let me see here. Okay. So I have three psi, book. you're at a medium range, but an attunement does things. I have it. I should know what yeah. it does. So what? But... What is your what is your highest clear sentient thought? Two. Two. Okay. So you are at extreme range, which is ten kilometers. 
But then he has the special thing from being a clear sentient, doesn't he? Right. When a that clear is... sentient and a teleporter particularly link up, I think that's when we get extra distance. Um but I don't so I don't know if that's how that works. Let me let me I think okay. what happens is that he gets to use his powers at your attunement range. Oh, ah, okay. Is how that works. There's not not a special thing. So I I will say at this range and with the ambient corruption, you don't have the means to to surveil this or that, access it. That's fair. Laughs will turn to the scarlet. Could we borrow a couple of your clans Claire Sentients? For which per for what purpose? We'd like to probe that location and get a good uh, understanding of how it's laid out so that we can effectively infiltrate it. Uh, it now may not be the best time to be asking for that particular It activity. would be right now, actually. Yeah, this is the only time, sir. I see. Trust me. <laughs> I kind of look over to, to the Scarlet and just shrug. He says, I... Um, no harm's going to come to them. I have heard, and this is actually, I am, I am <laughs> unveiling some of my own ignorance. Most of my knowledge of Psy comes from my charges and my students. Um, I am aware that Scions can combine their abilities. That is not fully... I do not think you will get the advantages that you think you will. Whatever it is that get, use, allows you your powers uh, seems to not be as strong. The ability to link and combine is not as strong uh, as it is with you. Very interesting. I'd like to know more about that, but I think we're, a, we're on the wrong side of a war for me to start making those sort of questions. Good to know. Well, my apologies. Uh, that I... idea out the window. No, no, ma'am. That is absolutely lovely that you were at least willing to th think about it. So I, I, I do. Yes, I think it would be very difficult. It is very difficult for our, uh, our clairsentience and uh, the very few teleporters that we have to begin to access anything on Vega Prime. Regardless, um, that is what I know as far as that concerned. Uh, what are your capacities in electronic warfare? That's my forte. Yeah, I was going to say, Logan just kind of points to, to Raphael. And... Ah. They're our electronic warfare specialists. Uh, any questions ah. for that field should be filtered through them. I see. Well, then I think you're definitely going to need some assistance uh, in combating their elect their defenses and offensive capability with commandeering uh, technology. Well, he's already infiltrated several of their systems, unless they're significantly more advanced than the station or the shuttle that was on its way here. I know of at least one dedicated technology and electronics manipulator amongst the colonies let us let us use the terms that you use aberrants although very interesting that's much more of a political term at least in this original than anyway i could go for hours about that subject um regardless and they have at least one full uh, artificial intelligence dedicated to its electronic defenses uh, I have no doubt that even with your no doubt prestigious skills um, that your vehicles would be taken over uh, as soon as you begin a serious approach of the planet. However, I am a gracious guest. Do you have a, a construct uh, of, of any sort? Uh, an, an AI or, or some sort of artificial uh, uh, mechanical intelligence? We don't really use AI anymore. Oh, hold on. Satisfactory intelligence. I believe that's the term in vogue today. 
why? Uh, she says, um, if you do, I can provide an upgrade. What would we owe you? I would say, uh, if we wish to be transactional about this. Um, if that was not your intention, I do apologize no. for overstepping, but you've already but, stated a uh, tendency you, to lean towards a transactional. Indeed. You, you, you brought it up. But um, I would say, you, I understand that you have not the authority to make this, but... Uh, your best attempt to convince your superiors that when a full assault comes into the Vega system, uh, that nest is not targeted, that it be considered a non-combatant. That is within our capacity to, to communicate, yes. Uh, we do have access to an SI, but I am loathe and i hope you understand uh again it's not an attempt to be rude but i am loathe to allow assets uh, to be accessed by non-mission personnel uh I under yes yes if i observe the upgrades that are being done would that be an acceptable compromise i would be okay with that i look to the uh, the rest of the group I don't say anything, but I kind of like raise my eyebrows. So out of character, she's basically saying that our Vargs would get taken over pretty much immediately. <clears throat> yeah. And there's no... Okay, then back. And, and the counter to that is letting her tinker with our AI. So can't we... Will that work if we're genetically connected to them? Can they take them over from us? That's in character. I would are, assume so. One of the reasons we, we, we know less more, but I um are your devices entirely biotech? It's my understanding that most biotech has some hard tech components. A few, but they would be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. what is hard tech on my varg uh weapons would be wouldn't they some weapons, they don't have to be they don't have to be mm -hmm. i mean like uh does your does your have uh thruster systems nope <laughs> no mine yeah. does though uh yeah i mean they're like just based off like the 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 description of biotech in general there's going to be some hard tech components. Uh, I don't know what specifically they would be, but regardless. I think pretty much unless you're a biokinetic, then you wouldn't really need the hard tech, I don't think. Raphael will, just to help, I guess, that, since we don't know the actual things Raphael will just sort of on our devices start typing out a list to these fellows of these are the systems that would be vulnerable. Yeah. I see um, it. Uh, I, I can see the, the the scene in my head. None of us uh, like disabled the the uh oh like thing of a, of a text, <laughs> and so just all is like uh oh uh oh uh oh uh oh oh oh, and like we all just kind of look down and be like, ah, uh, wow, yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, Raphael um, wouldn't give a shit like at all, like uh, zero shame. If, you did. If you are still, <laughs> like I said, I would have no problem uh, provided the upgrades were overseen by operative uh, Castillo. Uh, I would, uh, they would be also... completely in your control. And she sort of fishes out of her dress uh, for um, kind of like a checkbook sized uh, piece of, of like computer looking technology and says, uh, you would simply need to transfer your contract onto this uh, and it would provide the upgrade directly. Um, uh, you may... I don't suggest fully dismantling it. It is a very complicated piece of technology, uh, but uh, um, he, he says there are access ports 
Um, it is a platform uh, rather than a modification. The, the platform will provide the upgrade. So it's a USB with an upgrade on it, basically. Mm, more like a more like a new computer onto which you would transfer your uh, construct. As I said, the device and the process would be entirely under your control. I, friends, take a look. Uh, absolutely look, uh, yeah. Delta Operative. Um, I'm going to just say this, and he uh, laughs, looks at the Scarlet dead in the eye. You know, laughs doesn't really have proper eyes, but like one, you know, tentacle. Mm. Um, your people have a long history of computer manipulation on a deep, deep level. Yes. Hence my warning and the providing of this intelligence. That ability has not gone away. Right. What how do we know this isn't a back door? That's part of what I'm looking at. As I said, uh, I can give you the divine. I can give you the design specs, all of the access codes. But I think everyone here knows that, even beyond that, there would be ways. If I were to try that, you're you're, you're very clever and wily. You understand that. You could have all of the information in the world, and this could be used. I give yeah. you my word that it is what I say it is. An upgrade that is within your control that will not lead back or provide access. Now, you will have to manage your new friend, um, but... I, I would like to ask if I can have laughs get a sense of something and no is a completely <clears throat> acceptable answer. Sure. Laughs is trying to get a sense of the noetic negativity of taking this particular action, as in, like, how bad can this go for us in um, the long term if we do this? Do you have a power that you'd like to? Ah. This is... Uh, you can try and use Dakir from Prometheus Unbound. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, so that would be a Psy plus Integrity roll. Okay. Uh, well, yes. Okay. Uh, Jonathan, you can do that thing as well. <laughs> do the thing. Can we just wrap more meat around the things? That's uh, that's three successes, Scott. Okay. What you see when you try and, and pierce the the try and, and you're looking for the for the the negative outcomes. Um, and there are some. There are some pretty gnarly ones. Uh, but they involve, like you see, um, uh. You see, there it's it's almost like mundane uh, in, in what you're seeing. It's not like uh, you know tendrils of entrapment or whatnot. You see like legal proceedings. Uh, you see, um, like co like consequences from the forces of Earth uh, because AIs are super fucking illegal. Mm -hmm. Like you you begin to understand is like like you will be birthing a life that is considered to be illegal and anathema to the people you work for. And that could have some consequences if you bring that life back to Earth space. But back as far as, space. yeah, as far as using this for the mission, there does not seem to be any peril. So laughs uh, will say to the Scarlet, May we leave our child with you? He says, uh, my arms are open for all 
all new life. We'll discuss that. <laughs> also, five, Scott. Uh, yeah, you go over it. Um, uh, like, like you're able to to like form like a a firewall uh, yeah. to which you can start examining it. Uh, like you have a separate thing, a separate uh, piece mm -hmm. of information that has all the design specs. You cross reference it. There's no discrepancy in the design specs and what you see uh, in the software or the hardware of it. Um, and you you don't find anything that would looks like a backdoor or a trap. Um, but you also do not understand like the core functionality of what this mm -hmm. is. It is so far beyond your intellectual capacity it's actually kind of like shocking to like not un like you get to like all the bells and whistles around it sort of the input output like the stuff that would be used yeah. to, to form a backdoor you don't see anything there the beating heart of it it's madness tech all right I can't see a way that it would be easily exploitable, Lieutenant. Well, then I guess we're going to have to discuss it with her. Well, yeah. So, what are our next steps? Are you... Do you have any inclination as to where we should be setting our device uh scarlet uh, here somewhere in the vicinity of this yes i would my suggestion based on the amount of protection and defense levied at that spot if you're looking for something he doesn't want people to see uh you i would say get within range of your device as close as possible and do it there. Now, I can provide you a place to plan. I can provide you with intelligence. But I cannot assist directly. No. Uh, we could given g given the, the situation as, you, as, as you've described it, I, I would not even ask for your, your, in, any of your assets. I, I no, that is, that is quite clear. We we have a readout of use to us. Yes. You're aware of it. I'm, I'm sorry. What 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 are you asking? No, I'm 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 stating. Mm -hmm. We we have a readout of of some use to us a, a means by which we can rest, recuperate, repair our devices. Um, the details I am not comfortable sharing with you at this time, Understood. but there is a means of translocation that we might take advantage of um, within, say, orbit of this world. Would that be permitted? Certainly. I look back to the rest of the group. Um, would we, uh, is there anything else that we would like to discuss while we are here? Or would we rather retire? I have a hankering for a chili dog. I'm going to have to correct that once we get back to Earth, my friend. Well, I believe... Yeah, uh, there, there's just one burning curiosity that I know I have. By all means. What's your rate of success for the, over the last 10 years of your project? Incremental improvements, percentage-wise. Uh, she says... That is the, the details of which I am not willing to share. Uh, as it is not asking for details, project. just asking broad strokes. Broad strokes, numbers, numbers, percentage, success versus failure. 
she she kind of like just puts her hand up in front of you. And she says, what I will share is that over the life of the project, we have seen a incremental increase in rate of success, uh, mostly uh, in the uh, eruption of novas, but partially in the awakening of psychic uh, syads. And a handful of normal people who seem to have a knack for survival. Uh, and while, of course, I always abide by the strictures of my um, of my league, of my agreement with the colony, some of them just seem to be able to escape very easily. Um, and I simply don't have the resources to track down every single one of them. Part of it is the refinement of our methods, but also we have been able to catalog and uh, rec catalog and identify genetic factors uh, that can be in incorporated into the natal matrices uh, on Vega Prime that increase has increased the chance. So it's slow but steady progress. Thanks for the information. Yes. Well, once everything is resolved and I no longer have to uh, abide by the stricture of not having a natal matrix of my own on Nest, then I'm sure we'll see much a greater improvement. Anything else before uh, I bid you adieu and uh, leave you to your work? Do you have a means of communication that we can rely on, or would you prefer to communicate in person? Uh, you hear that sort of like transmission or uh, or or uh, like tangible communication and says, we can always talk. And then she just, to the rest of you, she just kind of nods. I mean, they have shown a, a capacity to be able to reach out to, well, me. I don't know about everyone else, but. If that is I, required again, and uh, and I'll and I'll I'll say to her, I don't know if I can respond in that way. She says, "If you're not pressed for time, I think that we might be able to experiment a bit." See if I can't see how far we can push those limits put upon you. Oh my. I am willing to see what we can do. She uh, turns to the rest of you and says, I do require uh, some privacy for matters such as this. Please continue to enjoy our hospitality. And she offers her hand to you. I'll look to the rest of the group and, and you know, uh, just wait for their input. I lodge a formal protest. But I... I, as I said before, when one starfish no, you're a grown ass man, <laughs> Lieutenant. Make your Stop. own choice on this one. Thanks. I <laughs> I'll take her hand. All right. Uh, and she leads you out the room, and that is where we're gonna take a break. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> right at the fun time.
Welcome back to Simulacra Studios presents Trinity Continuum Aeon, Varg for Salvation. Uh, as the Scarlet leads Jude away, uh, we will stay in this room uh, as you have uh, been given, you have access to uh, the readout uh, of all the tactical data based off of the Citadel and surrounding uh, uh, Grid City uh, off on Vega Prime. Uh, you have the platform onto which you can transfer uh, your mission agent, uh, which is Mak Makoto, uh, who's still around, and you guys still have access to her. She just hasn't been, you haven't used her all that much. Um, and Or anything else that you guys want to be getting up to uh, while you're still in the, uh, the Academy on Nest. So what's up? I so. guess I'm the only one who has an idea of a thing to do. <laughs> Let's hear it, Sergeant. Y'all know I'm going back to jail when I get back to Earth, right? No, you're not. It's like, guaranteed, but... No. There's no way that the FSA is going to allow me to not go back to prison. Don't go back to the FSA. Yeah, I was going to say... You yeah. don't have to go back. Whole world out there. Yeah. Been whole, back several worlds. You know, Skite is kind of nice this time of year. But I thought it was sweet. Claim refugee status in South America. What I was considering was potentially serving as some form of an ambassador here to monitor them. If they're going to become a potential ally, it would be worth it for Earth to have some kind of reliable means to communicate to them. So... Does anyone have any idea that's useful now? This this will be after our our mission is con concluded. I'm if I do if I don't die here, I would prefer this option than going back to Earth. Okay, so let's put a pin in that for now. Yeah, um, we'll put a pin in that because there is definitely. Definitely other options that are way better than that for you out there. Um, what can we tell about where this secret location is? It's underground. Yep. Deep um, underground. Yeah, it's like I said, it's about five miles underground, um, sort of in the center, in the center area of this gigantic spire. So. Oh, so it's part of the spire. Yeah, it, it's part of the spire. You, the, the information that you have does not say like it does not you don't have like schematics of the spire so you don't know if it's like um uh like an actual part of the spire or just like something buried under the spire but you have a general idea of where it is in from based on the map i feel like laughs is tactically s s sensible enough to look at this and of course he thinks everything's a trap because listeners think everything's a trap because it is but like is it more of a trap than other traps uh make me an enigmas roll okay Looking over what we have, the readouts and everything that we have, is there any way for us to try to piece together possible approach vectors or possible routes? Uh, let's resolve the Enigma's roll first. Yeah. From, from the <laughs> Three successes. No, totally. Three successes. Um. In so much as 
it appears to be and has been admitted to be uh, probably one of the most dangerous places in the galaxy. Um, and, you know, she's pointing you at it and saying this is this is probably what you want based off the information that you gave you. It's that kind of trap, but it's a trap that has been clearly labeled, you know, death pit. Mm -hmm. Um and there are more there are certainly defenses that you don't know about um uh, that could be considered traps but in terms of is she throwing you intentionally to your doom no you don't think so you think she said exactly what it is and you know because that that was what you guys wanted to know feel like we're in a bad uh, telenovela right now, folks. Uh, but as far as looking for uh, looking for approach vectors, that will be in another another um, uh, enigmas role uh, for for Raphael. All right. And also, how dare you? There is absolutely good telenovelas. They are all good in the fact that they are way too overly dramatic. I said there's no bad ones. Okay, good. Um, uh, do I have an we, idea for how close we could get with Psy powers, aka teleporting? You think that that's going to be a hard road to hoe, given just the amount of concentrated corruption um, on that entire planet? Um, you can probably get, uh, within, you can probably get within like what would be considered, um, like lunar orbit on the other side of the flesh ball God. Um, but that's probably the closest you can get, um, without running into a, a severe quantum wall. I wonder if it's easier or harder than trying to go to Chrome Prime. <laughs> Does do they do the uh the people here uh go there ever? The uh, ones who fail go back. Yeah. Can we go on one of their ships? I don't think it's I'm assuming it's one of the ships that bring them here. Why don't we ask? I have a potential answer or idea for that since it... Out of character, what is worse, corruption or radiation? Corruption. Corruption? Yeah. Corruption I... is like radiation in many ways, but like... More terrible. Yeah. Like, like so ra we... radiation will cause like cellular damage that will, you know, lead to, to, to um, uh, like, you know, your, your kids getting mutated. Corruption mm. just straight up mutates you. Could we potentially hide our surprise on one of their return transports and detonate it moments before we get there. Just long enough for the explosive to have dissipated and cleared out most of the <sighs> most things there if it's effective enough to do so. So I see where you're going with this, but I'm pretty sure that I that's going to be a no from her. An atomic warhead to wipe away a bit of corruption. Not the corruption, but it should still be powerful enough to eliminate some minor aberrants that are around. I mean, it is a tactical... If we went that route, I think attacking a different place would make more sense because we don't want to draw yeah. more of their resources to where we're going. Yeah. Um. Uh. uh how much did you make on the Nimitz roll for five? Five. five? Okay. Um. Yeah, causing some sort of distraction would be really good. Um. A nuke is a great distraction. Um. Uh, you know, you're you're still talking about like physical access was going to be is going to be difficult. Um, 
uh, yeah, your best bet, definitely a huge distraction uh, before you guys infiltrate um, the area, but you guys are still going to have to deal with a lot of physical defenses, probably some, some troops of some sort uh, defending the area, and just the fact of five miles of rock. So we have to get down there, down there to put to in place this. Um, what did I say the range of your thing was? Uh, ten kilometers. Ten kilometers. Um, hold on, I need to. I I should have, I should have given that to you in kilometers, but I forgot. That's uh, six miles. Six miles. Yeah. So it's a six mile range. So you could. You could get it on the surface and get basically have it be get it at the base of the spire. Basically, yeah, get it, if you get it to the base of the spire, then it should catch it. But you're that like you're that would mean that you are you it's going to be on the edge of the thing's perceptions as opposed to the center. Getting it at the head dead center is obviously going to be the best thing to do. But if you get it, it you can technically catch it. In the radius, in the in the diameter, if you hit hit basically the perfect point on the surface of at the base of the spire. If we inform the this was being ran by the Trinity, right? Mm -hmm. The mission mm -hmm. was run by Trinity. Okay. Yeah. If we inform Trinity that the general location of where we're going to be where they need to look would that assist in their surveillance i, I mean if we if told I... them don't look at the center of where we're deploying this look at the edge a couple of miles into the planet would they be able to focus in on that enough to it can help, uh, but it's really about having the noetic connection that's important. And distance is irrelevant mm -hmm. in, in the subquantum realm. Plus, you're so pretty sure Otha Herzog already knows. So it would be best for something of ours to get down there. We don't necessarily have to get the whole device down there, but something I mean, that they can form a direct connection with. The device is supposed to be the direct connection for whomever is going to be doing this access. That's a little bit above my pay grade. Um, which is I'll, saying I'll, something. I'll just give you both would both wouldn't hurt. Having some, some a a a a noetic connection in the place and having the beacon go off, not a terrible plan. Um, we're going to move our camera over uh, for a little bit now. Uh, as the Scarlet leads Jude uh, to another portion of the academy, uh, one that is. you you see like students attendants like you pass many of them um but uh you move into a part that it seems to be less populated more of a private area um uh what uh, what she will tell you are her personal uh apartments mm -hmm. uh and she uh once once you're sort of away from any prying ears uh, she says, you are fascinating. I know I'm repeating myself, but I'm very impressed at what has been done here. Well, um, thank you. Uh, the hard work was done by a lot of other people, not me. You know, so uh, I can only be so, I can only accept so much praise, <laughs> as it were. I understand. I understand. Um, 
Uh, I let me admire them through you, though. Certainly. Um... Uh, and she leaves you over to sort of a side area that has um, the coziest kind of the coziest doctor's office you've ever seen. Um, like, like it, there is, it is certainly an examination table, mm -hmm. um, but it is far more built for mm -hmm. comfort, uh, and, um, than any other that, that you've been on. She says, please take a seat. I will. Uh, and she brings out some instruments, uh, that look vaguely medical, some that look more like scanners and the like, um, and proceeds to give you a physical examination uh, and uh, pass over some devices uh, and just seems to, as she goes over the information more, um, her attention on you as like a person just starts to diminish and she is just enraptured in the data that she is getting. Um, are you going to do anything while this, this is happening with her? Sorry, Kat is one deciding that now is the best time to, to play amongst all of my electronics. No, no, Maggie, it's just a shadow. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me take a look at one of my superior powers and see if okay. it's applicable here. Sure. You know, I gotta get a book real quick. Looking up rules, looking up rules. Stuff to edit out later. Oh, the joys of a pre-recorded session oh, that yeah. you can so, edit. <laughs> so I do have a power, but her attitude towards me and the group in general has not been such that I feel it's really necessary to utilize. It's... Mm -hmm. um, it is uh, the power compelling. Right. Um, so, I mean, I, I mostly just want to try and, I want to try and get as much information about her, her assets, and, and sort of the, the, the tactical situation as I can. Um, ideally being a bit subtle about it, uh, but okay. using the excuse of sort of using the current situation as a means of maybe keeping getting her off of her guard okay uh give me a persuasion roll please i believe that power has some some enhancements to that as well you lost your audience. Uh, it's presence, presence so yeah, okay. if i can do presence persuasion then yeah Ab absolutely you can So the power is I get enhancement on all roles involving presence. I choose a single uh, advan uh, adjective, and mine has always been courageous. Okay. Um, if I act towards my uh, my my towards an adjective, I get plus three enhancement. Um, uh, persuasion presence can generate successes. Successes can be used to shift attitudes towards me uh, in a positive way, one for success. And then there's one about like cooperation yeah. uh, that I don't feel is, 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 an, is here. So does my courageous... How are you being courageous in this moment? So you really don't feel like the situation calls for it. So I'll just take the the, the the base plus one. All right. So presence, persuasion is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if, eight D10. If you, would, if you would like to make a courageous move. Hmm. 
I will, uh, whatever scanner she's currently looking at, I will politely but firmly like grab a hold of it and pull it down in a way so that it is not actively scanning me, bringing her focus back to me and sort of confronting the beast in its own lair, as it were. I would say that would absolutely give you, give you that bonus. Okay. So does that mean total? Do those stack? Yes, those stack. Four enhancement. Okay. Roll an 8d10 for enhancement. Mom, literally anything. Oh my god. Nope. How much momentum do we have? Or is there a flashback? If you would like to make a flashback right now. (laughs) Retroactively? Yeah, sure. (laughs) We we, we haven't. All right. Uh, So, okay, so you're activating your reverie. Uh, We've decided which one it is. So uh, as you are like going to uh, reach for the scanner, uh, we, we, the action slows down. We get the nice lost whoosh and set up the scene for us, Nigel. So it is a beautiful starry night somewhere. um, uh, I don't know if I ever, if we ever agreed on a location for the Academy, but I always saw it as kind of, Maybe like southern Canadian, somewhere nice and and forested, secluded. Yeah, the, um, wep- the Weapon X facility. Okay, got gotcha. the, the Weapon X facility. Um, only the most polite human wood weapons come from from Canada. Oh, yeah. Um. Uh, it, it is a beautiful star filled night. Not a cloud in the sky. No moon. Um, and on the top of a rather innocuous looking school building stand uh, or, or more accurately lay uh, a pair of teenagers just gazing up at the stars as teenagers are wont to do uh, a young man recognizable as jude maybe 10 years ago when he was uh, 16 uh and a young uh a woman uh, obviously sud american uh, the ecuadorian uh teenager frida varela his classmate um and they are both just sort of looking up at the stars Pondering the universe. So, are you gonna do it? I'm still not sure yet. I think there's so many what ifs to face. You know? But it's kind of the reason why we're here, you know? And... I'm happy for the opportunity and I really want to work with Eon and if this can help me do that, then I think I'm going to go through with it. I think I'm going to take the shot. But what if you don't survive the process? I don't think it's deadly. I just think it doesn't work, you know? I don't know. It always just felt like a story they told first years to scare them. You... Most tales have some truth in them. I'm sure that there are those who have died. I don't know for sure if the process is deadly, but I don't know if I want to do it. And there is a lot of radiation involved, that is true. But... They wouldn't, they wouldn't not tell us if it was, if that was a thing. Like we, ethics 101, they, you, 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 they would not tell us. Come on. Honestly, put that much faith in them that a massive organization would tell you everything about something you're about to do? I mean, there's a lot to be said for compartmentalization, sure, but I mean, I don't know, that's like supervillain kind of crap. I don't know if that's really Eon. I mean, who's to say they're not, though? We've seen good that they've done, but how much of that good was born on the backs of ill intentions? How much of that how much of their knowledge has been learned using ill begotten means? I mean, that's always the thing, isn't it? You know, Eon's 
good but secretly evil you know they did this good thing but it's always a cover-up for a bad thing why can't there just be good guys why can't there just be something in us that we do for good why does it always have to come back to this idea of they're secretly being bad isn't that because just everyone person? has their own motivation not everyone is out there i'm sure there are some that are just out there to better the lives of others but when you look at the less fortunate why are their not, lives not being bettered by all this technology and and advances in sciences and money and and all of the things they've learned why aren't they the ones getting it but they are uh, i mean they do so much outreach they they help people they open up free clinics i mean rita you've you've been here as long as i have you can't seriously be saying that you don't trust them i trust them enough to keep me from turning into something I don't want to be. The thought of becoming like those horrors we've read about. Uh, Frida, as you're talking, just bringing the subject up, the, the, the old pan, you feel the beginnings of, of the panic attacks that, that, you ha that you have when you think about when you because you've survived an aberrant attack and mm -hmm. you're feeling like the beginning of that panic attack starting to come back. I, I don't I don't want to become like that. Then it sounds like it's a pretty obvious choice for you. But it's not. There's always that fear in the back of my head that I'll die. I don't want to die. No one wants to. Death, death scares me more than they do because we don't know what's on the other side. It's no. the eternal question that humanity has been asking for millennia. What happens when we die? But the thought of becoming some... eight-armed, mutated, cancerous freak scares the bejesus out of me, too. I mean, I doubt you'd have eight arms. Frida, have something, you seen them? Something yeah. about the way that he said that. It just It's not rational, but you begin to feel the panic, and it just it becomes a, a, like he's just dismissing me. Um, and the panic just really starts to, to ramp up. And, and Jude, you start to see flickers and sparks uh, starting to lift Frida's hair up um, as she begins to levitate. And you begin to feel like this wave of pressure coming from her. Uh, Frida? You don't, you don't get it. You haven't seen them. You haven't dealt with it. I've been there. I've seen what they look like. It's it's okay. Let's no. Let's... You're not listening. I. And when she says you're not listening, there's just this wave of power as she begins to lift high up into the ground and, and begin. Her body begins to change into what we do not see, because in this starry sky. Something begins to eclipse the stars. A darkness starts to form, blanketing everything in shadow. And Jude, you are no longer your 16-year-old self. You are your current self in this memory that isn't a memory anymore. As the shadow and the darkness starts to focus and coalesce, um, you stand on an empty field as emerging and coalescing from the shadows is the figure of an old Chinese man who, once he has fully formed, looks upon you and just sort of shakes his head. He says, 
I heard about this. What have they done to you, my child? I'm sorry. Who are they you? Have, they have put a god in a cage. I... Do you mean the the Hamden Mizuki process? If that's what those monkeys are calling it. I... I felt a stunted little brother coming into my domain. And I did not wish to believe that they could they could limit us so, but now I see it for true. I don't feel limited. I'm you not don't, limited. You don't know. You don't know what you could be. Now I know you and I stand across a line. I know that we will no doubt do battle. But I cannot let this be. I cannot let one of the world's, the universe's paragons of power who has been castrated as you have. I am one of the only beings in this universe that can help you. The other fucked off having been proven wrong but I am here, and though we be enemies, I have to offer you. I have to offer you release and enlightenment. If you come for me, I want you to come for me as an equal. And he reaches out his hand in this place that isn't a place. Let me free you. Rude is feeling very conflicted. Nigel is feeling very conflicted. <laughs> the rule of cool is all but engraved upon the wall above my computer. Jude is someone who believes very strongly in the mission of Eon and in the Legion. And so there is this, there is very much a conflict in him. The Legion has drilled it into his head that aberrants are evil, that they are corrupted, that they are um, dangerous and violent. They're, they're sociopathic and they're just not... Um, they're not human anymore. They are a thing to be pitied at best and eradicated as a matter of course. But here he stands in a paradise world, shielded from a murderous star where questionable things are done, but life and society of a sort does exist. And in fact, could exist, uh, could be said to exist in a kind of proliferation that is astonishing. And the fact that that uh, well, Cesar dropped the whole, oh, and there's a planet of Novas as well. A lot of what Jude has thought was rather unshakable is um, shook. And he hasn't had a drink in a long time. And like you see that in that outreached hand, it's not just an outreached hand. It is a glass of power and freedom. And everything you were told you shouldn't want. And again, just in this space, 
Jude is sweating and he feels that that hunger and that need because it is it's a problem and it's a flaw, but it's one that he has embraced and he takes in stride and has managed to convince himself even makes him better at some things. And he will take with both hands, one hand over the glass, one hand on the forearm of the little man, of the little old man, and say, if we do this, and if I beat you, then you come with me. I'm not offering a deal or a negotiation. You are my enemy. But I, from a moral principle, cannot see one who could soar so high with his wings clipped. I offer power and nothing more. I am legit, like, out of play, I am legit conflicted. Fucking do it! I know, right? So mm. for everybody watching, I've been blowing up our little chat this whole time, like, fucking do it! Really, Just do it! Make the bad choice! The, 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 the excitement is palpable, and I... I Real talk, I love Novas. I love their power set. Um, I say, yeah, I think I'm, it would be interesting. I, I, I will take it and I will just, I will say to him, then fuck you. And I will down the glass. Uh, and right before we end for the night, uh, as you are talking away, uh, making plans, uh, laughs you feel something very wrong you don't know what it is but there is a scratch across the record of the continu of the continuum of the totality and you can't you don't know what it is how does laughs react to that I, i've got a really bad feeling about this and that's where we're going to cut it off. <laughs> oh, oh, it's such a bad choice. Oh, God. <laughs> it's a wonderful choice. Make bad oh, decisions. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's for the drama. Dramatically yeah. good. Dramatically good. Horrible. Right. Yes. So, let's go over XP. You all get two that's, base experience. Is this a heal turn? We don't know. We'll Some see. of us get 150 XP. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see. We will talk. I will. We will talk about that off camera. God. Uh, okay. So yeah, like I said, uh, everyone gets two base experience. Uh, who achieved a short term aspiration? Um. Does this classify as getting into a fight that leaves a, a permanent scar? I would say yeah. You are in a conflict and you are irrevocably changed. Okay. Then yes, I did. All right. What about everybody else? Oh, and uh, I resisted an offer of alcohol. Well, it wasn't an offer. No, I yeah, did. Yeah, close, close I enough. would still, I would still say you, you resisted the temptation. Uh, all right. So, what about laughs? Did you get any of your aspirations? I did. I got both my short terms. Offer a ridiculous solution and support someone, whether they want it or not. Absolutely. And what about Jim? Did you get any of yours? I got one. I okay. helped Raphael with their tech stuff. Yeah. All right, and Raphael, what about you? I don't know, because I'm not particularly comforting. And uh, I don't know that I outsmarted or outsassed Anova yet, so. Hmm. I mean, you offered some kind of comfort to Logan in the sense that, like, you're that's trying to offer other true. solutions. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, that's actually true. Staying here on eugenicist planet or yeah. going to prison 
<laughs> so yeah, I I did. Uh okay. Um so uh uh Wu, what about you? I don't think so. I didn't think I shared a moment with a teammate. <laughs> And I don't think I got around to making a decision unless the group decision counts. Uh, I mean, you were involved in a pretty serious decision yeah. about about how to, to proceed with this. So I'll, I'll give that one to you. Okay, so that means that per short-term aspiration, you get an XP. And then everyone gets an additional one because everyone achieved one. Uh, I don't think we've had any long-terms this game. Um, uh, and yeah, you did spend half your momentum, so that's another. Uh, and I would say uh, definitely as of the last choice made, uh, we have achieved a story milestone. So that's another XP for everybody. And I, I think, think we that... hit the momentum twice. I uh, do believe we did. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say that as well. Um, all right, cool. Uh, so uh, let's. does anyone have anything they would like to plug before we cut this off? Go and listen to mm -hmm. Opcast if you haven't yeah. listened to it yet. Go Please do that. Please do. I'm already caught uh, up. <laughs> check out CerberusInteractiveMedia.com because then you can see everything that my LARP company is doing for this upcoming year. Kick oh, ass. Yeah. All right. Well, um, cool. Uh, then I just have to do my spiel, uh, which is if you'd like to support the show or the channel, you can go follow us on on Twitter at Simulacra RPGs. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitch and YouTube at Simulacra TV. But the best way is to go to patreon.com slash Simulacra Studios and become a patron. Uh, you get access to our private Discord where you can talk with me and all past and present cast and crew members, as well as get access early access to casting calls for future projects. Um, so... I've got to have a big old talk with Nigel about some stuff, oh and then we will see how that shakes out next episode. Night, everybody. <laughs>